Um, <laughs> there's a lot of things. There's a lot of titles he's got to get used to, I'm afraid. <laughs> Does he have to wear different hats too, Jackie? Just like you? What's no, I, no, no, I don't know. Yeah. He had yeah. those can't see and win more. He's just great support. Yeah. <laughs> and he, he, All he, right. He, he always was my chauffeur. He enjoyed that, actually. He used to tell me I'd I take my best naps waiting in the car for you. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to exercise go some quick shopping. authority here. I'm, I'm <laughs> muting everybody for just a second. I just want to show you how this works. I'm going to mute everybody. Good idea. So technically you are all muted, but you can all still hear me. So I just want to practice something really quick. Even though you're muted, if you can hear me, raise two thumbs, raise a thumb, nod your head. Awesome. Great. Okay. Um, you can unmute yourself, right? So I have allowed you that opportunity to unmute yourself. You are welcome to stay unmuted, but sometimes background noise kind of gets in the way. Um, our team tonight will be able to mute you if for example, you're not recognizing that the background noise is echoing. So if you do see yourself muted, um, feel free again to unmute yourself. You will always have control of the mute. You also always have control of the video and we are recording. And before we do anything, I'm gonna read a statement out loud and then we'll hop into our meeting. So I apologize about the statement out loud, but here it goes. Pursuant to Governor Ron DeSantis' Executive Order 20-52, issued on March 9th, 2020, as continuously extended, and Section 252.38, Florida Statutes, all local governments are authorized to waive procedures and formalities otherwise required by both state and local law, as necessary to allow the local government to continue to perform public work and take whatever prudent action is necessary to ensure the health, safety, and welfare of the community. This meeting has been noticed and will be run consistent with the virtual meeting procedures utilizing communications media technology adopted by the City Commission on December 3rd, 2020 via resolution number 2020-243. In light of the current pandemic, accommodations have been made to provide the opportunity for public comment without the need to attend today's meeting in person. The material for today's meeting is available online at www.coconutcreek.net. Members of the public were advised in the notice for this meeting that they could attend the meeting virtually or email advanced comments, not exceeding 400 words, to eduab at coconutcreek.net or by calling 954-973-6729 to leave up to a three minute comment on the city's dedicated public comment voicemail. All public comments that were received by email or phone message prior to 6 p.m. on March 22nd, 2021, will be included as part of the record for this meeting and will be considered before any action is taken. The city provided a simple set of instructions explaining how the public may submit their advanced comments, which were published in the notice and on the city's website, www.coconutcreek.net. The city did not receive any advanced public comments for this meeting. Anyone wishing to appeal any decision made will need a record of the proceedings and for such purpose may need to ensure that a verbatim recording of the proceedings is made, including the testimony and evidence upon which the appeal is to be based. The audio of this meeting may be requested from the city clerk department or may be heard online by attending the virtual meeting. In accordance with the Americans with Disabilities Act, any person with a disability requiring assistance for the meeting may notify the city clerk department. So there you have it. There's the official reading statement. Uh, one more time for those newcomers, we will be recording the entire meeting. You should also know that we will be keeping a full record of the chat box. And so what I want us to do, because the chat box is gonna be integral today, is first to have you all just say hello in the chat box by entering your first and last name. Anything else you wanna say is great, but definitely your first and last name. I'm gonna go first. In the chat, I'm going to just type in Cheryl Trent and I'm going to hit enter and everybody should see a chat. There we go. We're coming in. That's great. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. As you guys are continuing to do that, if any of you are having problems with the chat box at all, please let one of us know. If you scroll back up to the top of the chat, you will see some names, some phone numbers and some emails of our team tonight. We'll be happy to help you with anything it is that you might need or want technically on Zoom. 
And I would definitely encourage you to think about the chat box as a great way to express yourself, especially to ask questions that we may not be talking about tonight. So in a minute, I'm gonna ask the vice mayor to lead us off, but I do want to say this, that this meeting is about the vision for the future of Coconut Creek. I'll get into that more in a minute, but if you have anything, specific questions that don't relate to the vision, that are about a specific topic or a specific issue, the chat box is the best place to enter those questions. If you want us to get back to you with those questions, make sure your email is also in the chat box, but know that this is a public record and that this chat box will be part of the public record. And so when we publish that, people will be able to see your name, your question, and your email if you enter it. I just wanna let you know that. All right, uh, Vice Mayor, would you be so kind as to um, lead us into this meeting about Vision 2030? Absolutely, Cheryl, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, obviously all the hard work you're putting into this. And thank you for every single person that has decided to log on and attend. Uh, the time that you're willing to give us right now is, is so significant uh, to everybody on this call. Now. Listen, when we talk about Vision 2030, it's something that Cheryl kicked it off to. We're, there, obviously, we all may have issues now with a sidewalk or a roadway. Listen, those are now issues, and we're going to get to them, I can assure you. But when we talk to, about Vision 2030, we're talking about something bigger than this. We're talking about sustainability. We're talking about resiliency planning. We're talking about what our city is going to look like in 10 years. We want to talk about how we can increase our public places and our public spaces increasing our, our green system and our greenways, thinking about ideas of pedestrian flow and where do we want people to, to, bike, to, to bike, to walk, to run, to exercise. These are things that go into planning a decade before that. And other unique things we want to talk about is, is neighborhood, uh, na neighborhood development, neighborhood safety, how your independent neighborhood is going to correlate to the city's larger plan. And something that we can always focus on is business development. How do we support our local businesses so that when we grow, they grow and everybody in this community is successful? We're going to talk about issues of public safety. Listen, there may be people on this, uh, on, on this forum in this public space today that want to talk about our fire department, but that's an integral part of our vision over the next decade that we're standing up our own fire department and continuing to support the Coconut Creek Police and how they can continue to keep our neighborhoods and our communities and our schools safe. And you know, another issue that I, I, I've really conceptualized, especially because, listen, some of the directors that you have on this call, you know, 10 years ago, they weren't directors in the city of Coconut Creek. So something unique that we have to talk about is internal uh, sustainability in the, in, in the city. Meaning how do we keep the good people that are doing this great work here in the city, uh, you know, to make it bigger and better. So those are just to, to, to kind of spitball some ideas. These are some things that, that I've envisioned when I think about why we're here and what we're doing. And the only thing I could really just say to everybody is thank you for your time. And, and, and candidly, no idea should be left unturned. If you have something you think or want, you will, you'll be amazed. The smallest seed of an idea could change our community in the next decade. So uh, Cheryl, that's all I'll say. I'll turn it back over to you and thank you again, everybody for your time. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Those are, he, he hit the nail on the head. Um, what I wanna do is take a minute and check in tech wise because we've had some people join us. So you will notice that you are looking at probably one big screen, depending on how you set up your view. Obviously in the upper right hand corner of Zoom, there's a view button. I like to look at the gallery view because I can see everybody. If you look at the speaker view, for example, you will be able to see in much larger size whoever is currently speaking. The reason I don't do that is sometimes there's background noise and so people will fade in and out of my main view. So I like the gallery view. You will also probably notice that you see a bunch of people, really like real people right now, but there will be an arrow on the right hand side of your screen that says from in my case it says one of three if you move over those are all the other people who are currently in this meeting what the system does is it promotes to the front page those of you that are on video so those are the people we're going to see most and again it is perfectly fine if you want to stay off video or on video 
We're gonna use breakout rooms today, and I would encourage you to be on video for your breakout rooms so your host can see you when you raise your hand. Um, if you're familiar with Zoom, feel free to use any of those tools and techniques, right? You can raise your hand, you can do an emoji. Most of our work is gonna be done very simply by raising your hand and waving it because it's a very visual, um, you know, it's movement that catches your eye. But most of our work is going to be done because we're so big today, which is amazing. It's going to be done by chat. So the intent tonight is you are going to be done no later than two hours. If you guys want to hang out and talk longer than that, you are welcome to. We'll continue recording. But my goal as your main facilitator tonight is to keep you on time and on track. Some of this is going to feel really fast paced because we'll need to make it fast paced in order to capture more than 100 people's comments in one two hour meeting. Don't worry, if you come up with an idea later, there are gonna be lots of opportunities for you to share that with us. Your first opportunity is to email me directly and my information will be in the chat box or email any one of my staff team that's on board with us tonight. I'll bring them up in a moment. And I also wanna point out, um, the vice mayor spoke, but there are also several other commissioners on board tonight, as well as several key staff members. Um, their role tonight is first to listen to what you have to say, to ask any clarifying questions if they don't quite understand what you're trying to communicate, so they truly understand what you're trying to say. And also, if there is a question that they can answer, they'll be right there for you to answer that question. They might answer it in the chat because there's a record. They might answer it verbally because we're recording it, but that's the role of the staff. You may also see them trying to ask some questions to, to get more data from you. They may, I call them prompting questions. So they're not suggesting something. And the reason I bring it up is because you, the community of Coconut Creek is really the reason we're holding this meeting. So I wanna introduce a few people to you and I'm gonna come full circle back to Elise, but I want to make sure that you know that Elise is here tonight as our graphic artist. She is going to be capturing what you say by sketching it. And in about two minutes, I'm gonna come back and ask her to share her screen so that you can see what she's actually up to. In the meantime, um, I wanna introduce the other people that are helping out tonight because you're gonna be joining a breakout room with one or more of these people tonight. Um, Zach Ratkai is on board. Zach um, is in the middle of my screen. He's waving his hand so you can see how that helps a little bit. So Zach will be managing a breakout room as well as answering any tech problems that you might have. I have Aaron Johnson on board with me tonight too. Um, Aaron is the main recorder of our meeting. She'll also be um, trying to capture all of the chat box comments that we might need and she's running a breakout room too. Uh, Anthony Ruiz is doing our first breakout room. There he is. He just put himself on camera. Hi, Anthony. How are you tonight? Hello, Anthony. everybody. How you doing? <laughs> Anthony lives in Florida, so he is a native, not a native Floridian, but currently makes Florida his home. I'm He's just Kissimmee up right. in the uh, great uh, land of Kissimmee, Florida. And then um, we'll have Bernadette, one of the, your staff members in Coconut Creek, Hi. helping us out tonight in a break room as well. And then, of course, me. So I'll be helping out in the break room. Literally anything you need to make this meeting easier on you, you do. If you wanna get up and walk around, if you wanna turn your camera off and grab a drink, if your cat walks across the screen, that's not important at all. What's super important to us tonight is to hear your feedback about your vision for the future of Coconut Creek. So if you haven't already entered your name into the chat box, I would like you to do that now. I'm going to remind everybody one last time, just in case somebody comes in like halfway through our meeting. But the reason to put your name in the chat box is so that we know we're here. We're required to take attendance, and that's the easiest way for us. It also makes sure your chat box works for you so that when we get to the breakout rooms, you're all prepped and ready. All right, Elise, I would like to turn it over to you and have you share your screen and tell us a little bit about what you're up to right now with this visual image of Vision 2030. Okay, good evening, everybody. I have a digital tablet in front of me and I'm gonna share my screen right now. So you can see that I have a digital canvas started with not much on it yet because you haven't said anything yet. And what I'm going to do is capture your ideas in real time 
on this tablet. A lot of what I'm going to be doing is listening really deeply and synthesizing your ideas into themes. So if you feel like you said something and you don't see your exact words or exact idea, take a look and see if you see that idea in a bigger theme because this is a future that we're creating. So we can't know exactly what it's going to look like, but we do know the values that we want to bring forward. And that's primarily what I'm going to be capturing and what this is going to represent. And we'll be checking in with you again later to show the progress. So I'm gonna turn it back to Cheryl. Thank you. That is definitely not the last you'll see of Elise, but of course we have to create some things in order for her to create some things. So what I want to start with is a poll. If you haven't done a poll in Zoom before, it's basically just a question. I'm going to open it up here and I want everybody to um, take a look at the polling. The question is, what is it that you want to preserve about Coconut Creek? Now, for those of you who, like me, have some vision issues, you can make this poll bigger or smaller, right? But I'm going to read each answer. You can pick more than one. As a matter of fact, I'd like you to pick your top three. I see some of you are already doing that. That is awesome. So um, these came and this question was in the community survey. So it might feel familiar to you. These are the most important themes, as Elise said, that came out of that survey. And one is the small town community feel. One is a safe community safe in all the ways you can think of the word safe. One is those green open spaces and parks. One is a clean community. One is a diverse community, and that means everything you can think of when you think of diverse. Uh, ages, race, cultural background, gender, work background, retired, young, old, everything you can think of around the word diverse. And then the last option there is community events. What I want to do is capture as many people as I possibly can. So I'm going to close the poll in about 45 seconds. I want, I'm watching my, when I, when I look at the screen, I see the number of people who have answered the poll. So I'm up to 40 people answering the poll. Great. That's awesome. Give you another few seconds. Oh, we're so close, 48 in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. All right, let's see what y'all said. So I want to share the results with you. So this is something also that we're going to take a screenshot of right now. So Elise, if you want to take a screenshot of the poll results, this is definitely something that Elise will start working on while we continue our conversation about what a vision actually is. So um, Elise, will you give me the high sign when you um, have captured this screen to your satisfaction? Okay, I'm gonna stop share and I am going to close. I wanna talk to you really quick about something I call ground rules. It'll just make our time easier. Um, you already saw me mute, but you know you can unmute at any time. We might randomly mute you if we need to because of background noise. Don't take it personally. It's just so the rest of us can keep going. And again, you're free to unmute whenever you want or need to. If you really need to get some context into your conversation, use the chat box. That is going to be the best opportunity for you to be able to be more in depth because we have, you know, 50, 80, 100 people on board tonight, it's going to be really hard to have a context behind your comments unless you do it in the chat. If you do want to speak at any time, wave your hand. Um, and in your break rooms, it'll be a lot easier to see a hand waving. So make sure you do that. No idea is a bad idea, right? We're not here to debate the idea. We're not here to, you know, get into a, an argument about what might be better or even better or the bestest of the betterest. We're just here to share your ideas and capture them. And every idea right now is a great idea. Um, I think the vice mayor pointed this out. We are here to talk about this vision of the future. What, what we see in 2030 that's positive, that's good, that's forward thinking, that's different than what we see today. 
But I'm hoping that your vision of the future is as positive for Coconut Creek as mine is. So we're going to steer away from uh, any um, significant negativity in the sense of, I hope your vision of the future isn't that we're a dirty, filthy city that has no uh, sustainable environmental standards whatsoever. I would encourage you, if that's truly your vision, we need to capture that. But I'm hoping it's very positive. So if you have a comment about something that you'd like to see fixed, we want to hear that, but I want to make sure we capture that in the chat room because we're talking about this vision of the forward future, not the today, not the now. Um, and then finally, what I'd like to say is that um, your participation is just so crucial. And that's why, as the vice mayor has already said, I know the staff feels this way and the rest of your commissioners. Just thanks so much for being on board. If you can stay with us for 15 minutes or two hours, any time you give us is valuable and precious. So we really want to say thank you. My name, by the way, is Cheryl Trent. Um, I'm a professional facilitator and I am helping the city work through these questions and issues around what is the vision for 2030 in Coconut Creek. We have a big old process. Um, this is one part of the process. You've probably already taken the survey. I know I've been able to speak to some of you personally. We have a series of advisory group meetings that we're using. We have this community meeting. The next big community opportunity will be when we have a draft of our plan completed with some language and some pictures. And um, I'm gonna cover this again at the end of the meeting and I'm gonna put it in the chat box. But that meeting is Wednesday, April 28th at 5.30 p.m. So you'll get to see the plan. You'll get to tell us what you think about it. You'll get to add improvements. But that's a really important next step for the entire community to be involved in the plan. Again, I'd say if you have any questions from comments, I see a comment, thank you very much in the chat box, please do that, we keep a record. It's easier on us than trying to type really quick while you talk. All right, here we go. A vision. What a vision is in the most classic sense is looking into the future. In this case, we're talking 10 years, but it could be 20 or 50 or 100 years. And I don't know about you, but I didn't know 20 years ago I was going to have this piece of equipment that has more information on it than my current computer has on it. You can't predict the future, but we can, in fact, create that future. And the way we can create it is by telling the city what we want to see 10 years from now. What does it feel like in Coconut Creek? What does it look like? What do you see? What kind of buildings do you see? What kind of houses do you see? What do you do for fun? Where do you eat? Where do you shop? Uh, what does the transportation look like? What do your parks and open spaces look like? What are we doing in the environmental sustainability side? And these are the very questions that we're gonna ask you tonight in our smaller breakout rooms. So I wanna set that up for you. I wanna talk to you about the breakout rooms and how I want you to engage. We have five breakout rooms, and I know it is super important that if you, in fact, are on a committee, a commission, an advisory group together in Coconut Creek, the law says that I cannot put you in the same breakout room. So we did our best, but first and foremost, check around you in the breakout room. If you see that for some reason you are matched up with somebody who's on your committee, commission, group, advisory group, task force, Come on back out to the main room, we'll get you reassigned. We wanna be really careful about that. The second thing is each breakout room has either one or maybe two questions that you're gonna to get to dive into. You are gonna be randomly assigned to that breakout room for the first session. And we will have 15 minutes in that session where your host of your room will ask the question, will capture the details, will give you some additional instructions, will let you know how to engage in the breakout room. I do know that some of you may get a breakout room and you're thinking to yourself, gosh, I really wish I was in the other breakout room. Don't worry, we've got that covered in the second part of our meeting. So here's how it's gonna work. We're gonna go into these breakout rooms. You're gonna be randomly assigned to those breakout rooms and once you hit that breakout room, your host is gonna welcome you. They're gonna say hello. They're gonna remind you of the question in those breakout rooms. And then they're gonna give you instructions on how to give answers. For the most part, it's gonna be in your chat box. 
But your instructor, your instructor, your host may say, hey, what, what's y'all's first name? Hey, you know, raise your hand if you've ever done strategic planning before, um, that kind of thing. Um, because we do wanna get a chance to know you more personally. And again, if for some reason that breakout room is not where you belong legally, come on back out. After we come out of those breakout rooms, after 15 minutes, your host is going to report out the results of your breakout room in those big themes. Like Elise said, this is so we can all hear, but also so that Elise can start capturing some of these ideas while she's sketching. We are then going to take a break, and that's going to be right at 730. We're going to take a break. When you come back from the break, Elise is going to show you what she started to sketch. And we are also then going to go into our second session. The second breakout session, you get to pick. All, say, 100 of you could go into the same room if you wanted to. That's fine with us. You can hop in and out between sessions. So don't worry. You will get a chance to go into a specific breakout room of your choice after uh, we finish this first session. So I know that was a lot of detail for you. Sorry, if you've done breakout rooms before, it'll be fun. If you haven't done breakout rooms before, that's what we're here to help you with. So let me set the stage. These are all going to be questions in your breakout room. I want you to, I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to look like a total goofball, but it really helps. If you want to close your eyes with me too, you're welcome to do that. I want you to imagine 10 years from now in the city of Coconut Creek. And we're all hanging out, probably still virtually, it's 10 years from now. And we're saying to each other, oh my gosh, can you believe all the amazing things that Coconut Creek has accomplished in the last 10 years? Look at all the cool things there are to do in town. Look at all the amazing restaurants. Look at all the parks and open spaces. Look at all the things for families to do. Look at everything that a person who is five years old or 95 years old can do. Look at all these amazing fun things to do indoors that we never had before. Look at our downtown. Look at all the cool things going on in the downtown. Think about the cultural activities you can do. Think about how transportation has changed positively in the last 10 years. Think about the cool things about the town that make the town, the city that make the city so unique. We are 10 years from now, and you're going to be answering these questions as if we are literally 10 years from now. One of the questions is going to be, you might get assigned to a room that asks you, what do you see? It's 2030. What do you see as you drive or walk around the city of Coconut Creek? What's changed? You might get asked, what does it feel like? So you're describing what it feels like to drive, to come, to visit, to shop, to eat, to live, to work in Coconut Creek. You might get asked what kind of jobs exist in the year 2030 in Coconut Creek. You might get asked what kind of people live here. Who are they? How would you describe them? You might get asked what are the fun things to do? What are we going to do for fun in Coconut Creek in 2030? You might get asked, where are we going to shop? What kind of shops are there? What do they look like? What, what kinds of things can I buy in Coconut Creek? You might get asked, where can I eat? What kind of restaurants do we have? What kind of food is there available? You might get asked, uh, what is different about transportation? What is different about safety? And these are all things that we're thinking about the positive future that we're trying to create. Because we're going to take your feedback and we're going to figure out if we can make that happen and how. So you're telling us what you want to see and everybody's going to have a different opinion and they're all good ideas. Let me stop for half a second here. Sherry asked me a question completely randomly determining about who's in the room with the exception of we have specific staff assigned to rooms to be your hosts. So we know who those people are and we have a list of those people that served on committees and commissions before. And so we are breaking them up into separate rooms. I can tell you quite honestly, because we have five commissioners, we created five breakout rooms. So we would not cross purposes with any one of the commissioners. Other than that, it's 100% random. Anthony took the people who are in the meeting right now and he has assigned you all to a breakout room. So when Anthony opens up the breakout room, not yet Anthony, when he opens up the breakout room, 
you will be asked to join your breakout room. And in some cases, the system will pick you up and swoop you virtually and dump you into your breakout room, whereupon you will be happily greeted by your host, one of which will be me, and you'll start. You will have 15 minutes. Your breakout room will automatically close at 15 minutes in the middle of a sentence even. It will automatically close. And because your host has to capture the chat room, he or she will likely say, okay guys, gotta capture the chat room. Give me a minute and do some work on the side. So I wanna check in really quick with the group. If you have a question about anything to do with breakout rooms, please drop me a line in the chat. And I want Anthony to turn on his camera really quick and I wanna visually check with Anthony to make sure Anthony, we've got five breakout rooms. We've yes. got all our hosts in there and you have everybody that's on the uh, Zoom meeting assigned to a breakout room, right? Yes. Anthony's a rock star. At any time, you can leave your breakout room, but you're gonna come back to basically a vacant space in the main room. So just know that there might not be anybody in the main room to greet you because we're all in our breakout rooms. All right, Anthony, on the count of five, four, three, two, one, go, Anthony, go. All right. Hi, everybody. All right, let's wait for a few more people to drop in. Hey, Lauren. Hey, Greg. How are you? How are you, Annie? <laughs> Good. Okay, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started here. We may add a couple of people as we move along since we have a little bit of a smaller group. Um, why doesn't everybody go around and just introduce themselves, uh, their name, and um, possibly your title if you do work for the city of Coconut Creek. Again, my name is Erin, and I'll be facilitating this breakout session for you. So why don't we start with um, the city clerk? Hi everyone, I'm Leslie May. I'm the city clerk for the city of Coconut Creek. Denise? I am Denise Campbell. I don't work with the city. I'm with Florida Atlantic University and I've been in Coconut Creek for about uh, 27 years. Great. Greg? Hello everyone. I'm Gregory Gale. Uh, I live in South Creek, the original Coconut Creek, and I'm happy to be here. Great. Welcome. Amanda? Hi, I'm Amanda Fishman. I um, am, on the, am on the Community Outreach Board, and I have been in Coconut Creek for three years now. Great. Welcome. Lauren? Hi, everyone. Lauren Linville. I live up in North Creek. I sit on the Public Safety Advisory Board, and I've been in the city for almost a decade. Great. Mickey? Hello, everyone. I am Mickey Belvedere. I am commissioner in the city of Coconut Creek until Thursday, <laughs> at which time I am retiring. I don't know if I'm happy or sad about it, but uh, it's it's been it's done. So hello everyone. <laughs> All right, Scott. I don't know if you are able to introduce yourself or not. I'll give you a second here. Uh, yes, good evening. Scott Staudenmeyer. I am the Director of Sustainable Development for the city, and I have um, worked for the city for 20 years, but I am not a resident. Okay, great. Gene? Hi. Hi. My name is Gene Dupuis. I work for the city of uh, Coconut Creek, 17 years. I'm the Deputy Director of Utilities and uh, Engineering Division. Department. Fantastic. And Francisco. Actually, this is Eric Rupert. I'm, I'm actually uh, <laughs> in the car and pulled over. Francisco gave me a thing. I'm the chief technology officer of City of Coconut Creek, and I actually am a city resident, and I've worked for the city for 36 years. Okay, and your name was Eric? Eric Rupert, R-U-P-E-R-T. Okay. okay, perfect. I'll make note of that. I'm listening in. I'm, I, I'm in the car. I'm pulled over right now, but I'm... Uh, Going back to okay. 
Okay, great. If everybody could put themselves on mute right now, we are going to do most of this through the chat box um, in this breakout session. Um, so I just wanted to reiterate what our breakout session uh, question was. I know Cheryl went through them, but I wanted to reiterate and then like give you a couple minutes to um, think through all of this. Um, so the question I'd like to ask you, and please type your answers into the chat box. Um, what does Coconut Creek look like in 2030? Um, what do you see in the city that you don't see today? Um, as far as housing goes, how does it feel to live there in 2030? Is it safe, welcoming, friendly? Put some thoughts around that, and then please type your um, response into the chat box. Erin, I had a question. Yes. The chat box, it looks like it's going to go out to everyone on the call, not just the group. It's... It will just go out to um, the breakout. I It just keeps a running log, but it will okay. just go to the to the participants in this in this group. Thank you for your question. Mickey said, safe, green, no plastic use, friendly. <laughs> Safety, cleanliness, greenery, peaceful, people walking, not running to something. Safe, that seems to be a common theme. Dynamic, welcoming community safe, <laughs> vibrant, they're all great. Besides safe, what else? Can anybody put more thoughts around how, how it's gonna feel apart from safe? I like that, Lauren. Small town feel, more mix of use space, modern but homey, safe, welcoming. Bear with me as I try to capture some of these thoughts.
And what do you guys think about housing? I know I saw a little bit about modern. Um, what other types of housing do you foresee um, in Coconut Creek? Great. Since we have a little bit of time, I've captured quite a few thoughts. Does anyone want to speak up? You can speak by just raising your hand and, and making a comment if you'd like to, or if you guys would like to kind of um, brainstorm amongst yourselves or ask each other any questions. Should we just speak or? Yeah, go ahead. Sure. So um, one of the things I'm always proud to tell people about Coconut Creek is the fact that we are a well-run um, community. Um, and uh, I'm not quite sure if you're familiar with South Florida, but that's not a statement you can say about some communities in South Florida. Um, you know, I we don't have... Uh, potholes. We don't have sewer systems that are overflowing. Um, we don't have aging infrastructure. Um, and to me, those are things that uh, make living here pleasant. And 10 years from now, I would like to continue to say that because when other cities had deferred maintenance for years and years and years, uh, I would like to say in 10 years, that is not what happens in Coconut Creek. So. Great, thank you, Greg. I don't know how to yeah, raise Lauren, go ahead. <laughs> so I, I, um, I agree with what Greg is saying. I think the one thing that we could do, especially in the next 10 years, and I kind of alluded to it in the statement was redevelop some of the existing plazas and some of the, the spaces that we have now. I think that's only gonna be good for economic development going forward. You know, we have a lot of spaces, you know, we've had a lot of new spaces kind of pop up, kind of reducing some of our green space that we currently have. Um, and I, I don't wanna see that the city overdeveloped. And I think a lot of the residents feel that we're heading in that direction. I don't think we're quite there yet, but I think that it, they feel that way. Um, uh, but I think by really focusing on the redevelopment of some of your, our, our plazas that we see in South Creek and off a of sample, you know, we're seeing, uh, you know, the city's doing, a, um, is doing a beautification project up here in the, the North End, which we're really excited about um, and seeing those type of projects happening in the next 10 years. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's only going to bring you know, small businesses, keep businesses and help our economic, you know, recovery, even from what we're seeing with COVID and, and hopefully in 10 years, make it more of a community-based um, city as well. Mm -hmm. Does anyone else have the same concern about possible overdevelopment? Yes. Yes, Greg? I, I, think, I think that we're aware of overdevelopment. I also know that we have a wonderful system of maintenance where we, we continuously are checking what is happening underground. Mm -hmm. And so I'm hoping that that will be something that will continue and maybe even uh, make better. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other comments on that one? Yeah, just to, to talk about overdevelopment, I, you know, it's, it's in some respects a wonderful problem to have. Um, because if we were not a destination location, we wouldn't be talking about overdevelopment. We'd be wanting every single person to move here. Uh, and again, that's a testament to what has happened in the past where uh, this has become such a desirable destination that families and businesses and individuals are wanting to move here. And that's the pressure um, to manage that growth going forward um, without um, you know, jeopardizing our economic livelihood. Um, I don't think anyone here wants to live in Manhattan, or we would, 
um, or downtown Miami, not to say there's anything wrong with downtown Miami, um, but we've made the conscious decision to move here and to live here. Mm -hmm. Great comments. Anyone else have any other comments regarding that or um, another topic that was in the chat box? Um, the only other thing that I saw kind of commented on and, and I would like to say a little bit more is um, green um, initiatives um, mm -hmm. as far as incentivizing maybe even at the with our developers and um, with our residents you know we don't do enough to kind of incentivize I think in that sense we know that the state of Florida doesn't offer a lot of you know funding as it stands um, at the municipal level and I think it really starts with us at the municipal level to in order to incentivize there so I think if we could do more of that and I saw somebody with you know solar and in green spaces, I think that that would be something in the next 10 years, we, we need to start, you know, on, on that track a little mm -hmm. bit better. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, but I'm having trouble hearing Lauren. I don't know if anybody else is. Um, it's, she's a little bit quiet. Maybe Lauren, if you could speak up just a little bit and Mickey, maybe um, make sure that your volume's all the way up as well. You're on mute, but that's okay. Does anybody else have any comments on the green initi initiatives or incentivizing local businesses and residents? Anything on that front? I would only comment as a, an employee of the city that it is something we are very, very conscientious of. And we do a good bit now, but I know we can do better. And it's, I, I think, that's a theme that should continue to get pushed throughout this process because it is one of our, it is our identity in many ways. It really is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let me ask, since we have a couple more minutes here. So when I asked you, you know, how is Coconut Creek going to feel in 2030? How do you want it to feel for visitors? of Coconut Creek. It may be pretty similar, but what do you want them to experience and feel the first time that they walk into your city or your downtown area? And you guys are welcome to raise your hand and speak, or you can, um, <laughs> or it's a jealousy. Um, I can see that one. There you go. Uh, feel free to comment either verbally or in the chat box. I'll comment. Yeah, I'd Denise. like them to come and look and be jealous. Yeah, jealous is a good <laughs> word. But to really say, gosh, Coconut Creek is beautiful. You know, I remember when I first moved here, my brother came from uh, Tennessee to visit me and he was just overwhelmed by everything that was manicured and how beautiful it was. And I'd like that to mean to stay, you know, so 10 years from now, beautiful, but also to have different resources, whether it's, um, you know, continued up with the promenade or things like that, where you really could not have to go anywhere else, you know, you just stay in Coconut Creek and you can get everything, go shopping, you know, um, enjoy your home, have activities, the parks, you know, just really make it a, a one-stop shop community. <laughs> Great. Great. Thank you, Denise. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and continuing with that thought, um, we haven't really talked about transportation, and that really isn't a uh, Coconut Creek sort of specific, it's really a regional kind of issue, but the ability not to drive. Um, I would love, uh, I keep saying this, I, I said on a, another committee, I would love to take mass transit if I'm flying out of Fort Lauderdale, um, but that's not really an option. Uh, so to be able, whether I'm going to the promenade or a park or wherever, uh, not to have to use my car to get there. Okay, fantastic. Amanda? Um, to, to build on both of theirs, because they actually spoke to how I feel. Um, but when I came here, I came from Tamarack and then before that from Ohio. So coming here, um, I had the feel of Ohio was wide open spaces mm -hmm. and then in Tamarack, it was very quiet. And um, here was like the best of all of where I had come from because it was green and then there was families walking around and there was sh amenities close by where I didn't have to drive 30 minutes to the next place. Um, and I think that 
that is something that needs um, uh, that that should continue on because when you go into the surrounding communities, I won't speak to any of them, but they're very congested and very just everything feels on top of one another. All the businesses feel on top of one another and very redundant. Um, and so. Um, I love how we have things set up now. I know that there are space to put uh, a few more things, but we also have space that's not being used. We have a lot of open uh, storefronts. And if we utilize what we already have and not um, build too much, we can continue to keep the feel that we are close and tight knit and green and just comfortable without feeling, without doing too much, mm -hmm. like some of our surrounding communities have done. Sure, sure. Okay, great. Thanks, Amanda. Anybody else have any other thoughts around how you want others to feel, visitors, tourists, to feel when they come to Coconut Creek? Uh, one, one final thing that hasn't yeah, been addressed. Um, my hope is that in 10 years, um, we still have our own police force here. Mm. Um, I know because probably of economic pressure, there might be thoughts of merging um, or using the services of the county uh, police force. Uh, again, I hope in 10 years that we still have a Coconut Creek police force. Mm -hmm. Interesting, okay. I'll second that. <laughs> that, okay. I will make note of that, definitely. Anyone else have any other thoughts around that? What about anything else, uh, you know, surrounding the look and the feel and really what you can envision and visualize for 2030 for Coconut Creek that anyone wants to bring up, whether it's um, something we've already talked about or something completely new? So the only other thing that that keeps kind of replaying in my head is mm -hmm. um, um, a comment that a resident made to me one time and they said, you know, Coconut Creek is like your grandmother's sofa. Like it's mm -hmm. beautiful to, to sit on, it's, you know, or it's, it's beautiful to look at, but also, you know, you can't sit on it type of deal um, be, because there feels like there's a lot of rules, you know, where parks have certain rules about when you can and cannot come and them being shut down and that. And I think that taxpayers feel like they're spending a lot of money um, on services already that, you know, they're having to add additional like you know, um, like the, the dog park, having to pay for the dog park annually, some of the parks being closed down or kids getting picked up, kicked off the playground, um, that sort of thing. Um, so I, I understand the, the reasoning behind it, but I think maybe the messaging behind it could be better. So maybe the, the, the you know, how we're communicating out to the residents about how we're spending money and the reasoning behind it, um, I think would, would help that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have a comment on that? Not on that, but I was just going to say, actually thinking of the 10 year horizon, you know, I think one thing we would all like to see is um, walking through our city with a landfill that is closed and not active. Mm. And that may be realistic. Let's hope so. I, I would like to comment on um, sort of what the city is doing now in terms of engagement and hopes that it continues. Um, we have something called Citizens Academy um, within the city. And I don't know if many communities in South Florida actually do that. Um, but prior to me participating, I just had a sort of layman's view of how city government works. Uh, and to have gone through that um, uh, sort of process, um, I think if you can make that mandatory for every citizen to go through, um, because it really addresses a lot of questions, simple questions that individuals ask um, that I'm able to either answer or direct them in the right um, way. And in fact, um, my neighbors know that I've participated and I encourage two of my other neighbors to participate uh, in the uh, Citizens Academy. And, you know, we are knowledgeable. So when we see news about a particular 
topic. Um, we know the background of why the decision was made because you know, we participated in Citizens Academy. So hopefully to continue that engagement going forward. And Greg, that is basic, is it more of like an orientation for um, a new residents? So it's open to everyone. Okay. Um, and it is a way for citizens to learn how the city works. Okay. I believe it's over six weeks um, that um, on, uh, I believe it's Tuesday nights, um, they get to meet with uh, department heads um, and ask questions. So the department heads or the departments give a presentation and uh, citizens get the ability to ask questions. And uh, at least when I did it, I left with a huge binder um, of you know, budget and personnel and policies, et cetera. There, there it go. is, Got and it. a t-shirt, and a t-shirt, <laughs> um, so that um, you are knowledgeable about it. And I, I don't know, again, if other communities do that, but um, I, I just think it tells you a lot about a community. It's like when you're on the highway and you see a van that says, you know, here's my number, tell me how I'm driving. Those are not the ones you pay attention to. It's the ones that don't have that because they're the ones who are, you know, irresponsible drivers. And the same thing with the city. Um, it tells a lot about a city where they are willing to have you come in and talk to the uh, heads because there are lots of cities where, again, it's very difficult to navigate city bureaucracy. And Greg, or to the whole group, do we, do you all feel, or how do you feel about that program, which I think is fantastic? Is that being marketed? I mean, do you think that residents know about this tool that they could have access to? Um, the reason why I knew about it was because I did this actual Tamarack University when I lived in Tamarack. So when I moved here to Coconut Creek, I was like, well, they have to have one too have to. Hmm. So that's how I knew. And I looked it up myself. But um, on the community outreach board, we do talk about um, messaging in the community and things like that, and what to post, how to post, what things people need to know about. And so mm -hmm. Academy has been um, put on those uh, different Facebook, Instagram, um, things like that. It has been put out there like that. Um, if you're not following it, um, or if you don't have the cocoa gram, or if you're not getting um, messages in your email, and you might not see it, but we do have posters all around the city with different activities and events, and the website's getting redone, and they're putting those things on there. So I think in the future that it would um, uh, that 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 we're getting better and better at putting out our message and communicating it and doing how to so people can know what to do and see in our community. This is just a th and maybe someone from the city knows this because I actually don't know this answer. Um, do we have a partnership with our, our high schoolers, like our high school to come in and do the program? Um, I mean, 10 years from now, these high schoolers they might live actually in the city and have a better appreciation for the city that they're living in and paying taxes for. Just thinking from a, from a standpoint of a long-term gain, but I know we're short on time, but it's just a thought, you know, partnering with our, our, our educators um, in our school systems, have them do the program. And then, you know, four years, 10 years from now, whatever it is, they're, they're us sitting here and they're already well-educated on, on the city. You know, let's educate our youth, the ones that are going to be here in 10 years. Um, mm -hmm. So just a thought. Perfect, you guys. We are going to get kicked out of here and virtually warped back over to the main section. Thank you so much for all of your thoughts. I'm going to uh, collect all of your thoughts here and I will see you back in the meeting, okay? Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. Good all job. Right. Thank you. Hey there, it looks like everybody's coming back, which is awesome. So what we have a chance to do now is each one of us that hosted a room gets to do a quick one minute big picture overview, and then we're gonna go on a 10 minute break. 
During that 10 minute break, uh, Elise is gonna start capturing some of these comments and thoughts that we had. So I'm gonna lead off. I was in break room four and our questions were about some specific areas. So in the year 2030, um, what do you see that might be different, new, exciting, something you wanna see in the area of transportation, safety, parks, open space. And we also touched a lot on the environmental sustainability side we talked super briefly about, say, events and maybe recreation. And the themes generally in transportation are these very forward thinking ideas about how we're going to travel in the future. It might be electric cars, it might be aerial, but there needs to be some recognition from the city to think ahead into the future about how to accommodate that. Um, for example, if we're all doing some uh, driverless cars, we might not own cars as much. We might need fewer parking lots but we're gonna need more pickup spaces. So that's the conversation that's centered around that as well as the flow of traffic through the city and that it's gonna be easy, it's gonna be smart technology. You're gonna be able to drive one end of the city to the other on your major corridors without stopping. Remember, this is a perfect vision of the future, right? So I see y'all smiling, but if you could, wouldn't that be awesome? And then in the area of um, parks and open spaces, a lot of ideas about what I call cultural parks um, issues. So like a music venue, an amphitheater, um, unique parks that are interactive. Maybe they're tech interactive. Maybe they're interactive about environmental sustainability, but active educational type parks um, with kiosks potentially. Uh, rooftop parks, a nod to Wayne right there. Um, and different ideas about the utilization of those parks. So some really specific ideas there. Um, and in terms of safety, um, there wasn't a whole lot uh, that, that I was able to capture around safety, but one of the key ones was let's focus on the most significant of, of crimes, if we were going to focus on the crimes, and let's maybe shift our resources to deputy level. That's my report out. I'm going to go to room one, which was Aaron. Erin, could you do a report out for us, please? Yes, absolutely. I had room one and our question was, what does Coconut Creek look like in 2030 as far as what are you gonna see that you don't see today? And we went in a lot of uh, depth with how are you gonna feel as a resident, but then how is everyone else that's coming to Coconut Creek for the first time going to feel or what do you want them to feel? A lot of the same themes as Cheryl had, um, safe, was a huge theme. Um, and that included comments about uh, the police force staying within Coconut Creek and hopefully not merging to an outside um, county or merging with another city. Um, clean and sustainable was another big theme um, with green initiatives and uh, possibly incentivizing businesses for their sustainable efforts and even residents as well. Um, and then there was the, the concern about not becoming overdeveloped and really focusing on uh, redevelopment, redevelopment, excuse me, and managing the growth uh, as Coconut Creek continues to grow. Um, along with Cheryl, they also brought up public transportation. Um, everyone would love to be able to just jump on a light rail or a train and get to the airport. Um, but that was part of their vision for uh, 2030. So those were the, oh, and one other one, I'm sorry. Um, they told me about the Citizens Academy and really using the city engagement and the communication in the city to really broadcast that program even more than it already is to educate residents. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Anthony, would you report out on your room, please? I certainly will. So my group and I went over what type, uh, what kind of jobs uh, are going to be in Coconut Creek by 2030. Um, there was a emphasis on uh, light industrial jobs and a particular emphasis. They wanted to see um, small businesses be able to thrive in Coconut Creek by, by 2030. Um, we kind of went in, in, in depth with that a little bit. Um, you know, they wanted to see it continue to be affordable for businesses there and, um, you know, make it, they want to see more mom and pop shops, uh, primarily um, boutiques, family owned restaurants, things of that nature. And, and to that end, we, we extended that out, you know, 
and I asked them who exactly lives here. And what I was told was that Coconut Creek is currently in a, it's expanding and it's very diverse. And they definitely, the residents of Coconut Creek definitely feel um, like they have a healthy mix of young, old professionals and of all ethnic races and backgrounds. They want to see that uh, level of growth over the next uh, over the next 10 years uh, and be a place that is welcoming um, for those type of individuals. Thank you. All right, Zach, would you report out on your room? Sure, we had a, a couple of different questions here on sort of the funner side of, of being in a city and it was focused mainly on shopping and restaurants and dining. So moving along that, to go with the shopping question first, I think what we looked at was a lot of uh, cultural expansion, so multicultural markets, but a lot of things were identified that were needed in the South End. And this went for both shopping opportunities and the restaurants. Um, we've had some questions about, will there be a change in shopping? Do we need to invest in shopping centers and physical outlets due to the uh, propensity for people to shop at Amazon and get things delivered to their house? So a lot of questions in the future as to how shopping in that environment will change. Um, but we talked about having a more secure shopping atmosphere, particularly in the promenade. Um, being next to a high school, there's some reported, of, you know, some thefts and some business closings there. Um, and then a need for local shops that the community will support. So maybe not having shopping opportunities that are exclusively higher end to price out a good portion of the community. And um, sort of going around there in that area, we talked about bringing back Cocoa Fest, which uh, might be a discussion for a larger uh, group, group here, but also bringing shopping with longer hours so people have more opportunities to shop. Uh, on the restaurant side, where we will eat, where will those restaurants be? Once again, the South End was a big, uh, big uh, uh, area that needs restaurants, we were told. And uh, diversity, more diverse food options, more quick casual. So not necessarily your drive through McDonald's type restaurant, but not necessarily your sit down with a waiter restaurant. Um, outdoor seating, sidewalk eating, and more walk up opportunities, whether the COVID pandemic sunsets in the future, and we're all safely uh, you know, able to eat inside, but still having that opportunity for walk up and curbside service and uh, more diverse multicultural food options was the big, uh, big points from our group. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. And Bernadette, how'd your room, uh, your, room your room was the fun room, I know. We were the fun room, it's true. Um, so we were focused a little bit on um, fun indoors, fun outdoors, uh, fun events, fun recreation, talked about a couple of things. And I guess some of the themes that came out were, of course, the number one was outdoor activities, biking, parks, uh, gathering places for people of all ages. I think that came out a couple of times, having cultural activities for people of all ages. Um, some of the specific items that came up were an amphitheater, outdoor music, uh, cultural and arts events, events for all ages like water parks. Um, even bars, uh, those are some of the things that, that are fun for people to go and have a trivia night. Um, shopping, uh, some someone said no clothes, no more clothes. Someone else said, yes, more clothes. Um, someone said, what about kids stores? So those are things that people like to do for fun. Um, filling in those empty storefronts so they'd have more options for shopping, which is fun. And as we create the events for people of all ages and people of all cultures um, and people who just, just want to experience different things, making sure that we have transportation to those events, um, whether they're in Main Street, um, so that people, kids have the opportunity, even late nights, to be able to get to those events um, and the promenade. And throughout all these fun things, keeping the city green came out. Thank you. Oh, I just wanted to add too that one of the important features that that was discussed in that break room too was that we do these things for our residents only. And oh, yes. you know, Thank you. Um, that it was really discussed like, you know, we have this great butterfly uh, festival event, but we really will, you know, the, the feedback is to keep it really geared towards the residents and catering to our residents. I, I know there's a lot of cities out there that want to just bring in everybody from everywhere, but the feedback here was to really cater it towards the people who live here. Perfect, thank you. 
Um, what we're going to be doing during your break, which is coming up next, is working with Elise to share this information with her so she can start to capture it. I do want to give you a full 10 minute break. So that would be at 550. Uh, sorry, your time. <laughs> You're two hours ahead of me. So that would be at 750, 7.50 that you would return. You can come back early. We're not going to do anything you can't watch. So I will see all of you in 10 minutes, except for my team, including Bernadette. I need you to hang out for a minute with me. Um, so my team, I'm sending you a quick chat too, um, to send to Elise the themes from your rooms via chat. So you're going to direct chat to Elise. Obviously, the chat's all copied. It'll be all part of the public record. But this way, you can just send those themes directly to Elise and um, just capture them by question. So whatever your question was, make sure she knows the title or the general gist of your question, and then enter those themes into there for her. So, OK, so you don't want everything, just the themes that we just talked about. You can, you, we're going to have to keep a record of everything, but directly to Elise, just the themes. And then I'm going to dump everything into the chat box. So the chat box also includes everything I copied for the public record. Great question. Thank you. Hi, Sherry. Do you have a question? Yeah. Uh, are you going to do any kind of transcript, you know, like we do for the commission meetings and all that, where they actually have a, like a, the agenda printed out? Will there be any kind of a, a transcript or summary transcript that we could get as a pdf online or something and then i have another question after that <laughs> sure bernadette i can or you can whatever you prefer sure uh, we are recording this um sherry and so um we do have a record of it i'm not exactly sure how we're going to post it because it's a public it's a public meeting we will have it posted so if you've got my email you can contact me directly and i can once i know the answer i can get it to you Sherry, okay. Sherry, okay. Sherry, this is Karen. So really, hi, how are you doing? Good. How are you doing? <laughs> this, is, this, this is this is going to end up with a, a, a visioning document. So in the end, all of this. So what this is kind of the sausage making that we're doing right now, and probably not the data that you're really looking for. What you really would want in the end and what's going to be available to the public it is a vision document at the end of our entire process. So stay tuned and, and hang on for that. Okay, I did try to record it. I don't know if it's going to be recording it or not for me. So we'll see if my own thing worked. But the other thing is, um, I don't know that we had transportation. I refer a lot to Brussels because I visit there a lot. And they were voted like, uh, I don't know with what um, category whatever the heading, but they're um, very eco and very green, everything. I mean, they don't even have shopping bags. You've got to bring your own bags everywhere. Um, and one thing they have that's really nice, and in Brussels, it's considered city, um, you know, not, it, not like suburbia. They have pretty close to each other um, bike racks where um, kind of like, I guess, the shopping carts at that Aldi. I guess that's the easiest way to explain it. But you put the money in, and you it's on your own that you're renting the bike for whatever length of time you want, and then it gets returned there. Now, I would hope we would return them, too. Over there, they all do. You know, I don't know of any problem over there, but I think it's great. A lot of people don't have bikes, or they could get to where a closer um, part of the area by car initially and then use the bike to get around. But then it, we have to think of also bike racks, where to put them, you know, if we're getting somewhere where we could then park them, I guess. Sure. Hey, sure, Sherry, sure. Cool. Yeah. What I want to say is, hi again. What I want to say hi. is we are obviously recording this, so it's going to capture this. I want to be sure you might want to do it one of two ways. The first and easiest way is just put it into the chat box right now. That way we capture it in writing. Everything oh. I'm saying. The other way to do it is I'll explain this after break, but you're going to get to pick the room that you want to go into. So come into my room, which is those specific questions around transportation, etc. And then you can share it in that room as well. But in order to best capture it, let's have you somehow put it in the chat or come into that specific room. Will that help? Okay. That'll help. I also have for different rooms, I guess. I have different 
We are gonna go. We are gonna have different rooms. Yep. If you missed that first part, I will repeat it just as soon as our break is over. But you okay. have five minutes on break too. So you know if that's something you want to do. I'm sorry. We have another five minutes on break. Oh, okay. So, well, I'll do the. Let me unmute myself personally. I'm holding the space bar because it's. Easy. And to my team, I just want to remind you, I want you to put your entire notes into the chat box to everyone with the question on top. In case anybody wants to copy the chat box for themselves, they will have a record of that. So after you send those themes to Elise, then I want you to copy your entire notes and dump them into the uh, chat box to everybody. So here come mine, for example. And I'll warn you ahead of time, team, you already know this, that often uh, you can only put so much into the chat box before it does not like you anymore. So you might have to cut and paste in a little bit of a multiple kind of a scenario. All right. I just checked in with Elise and she is good to go as soon as we come back from our break. I'm so excited to see what she's been sketching. Hi, actually, was it another meeting, Sherry, when they uh, they did the, had an artist for everything that we uh, did and it was really neat. So I'm anxious to see this. Yeah, should be amazing. We have about three minutes left on our break. Hopefully everybody got a chance to stretch. If you didn't, it's always a good time to stretch. These Zoom meetings can be really rough on you when you sit and you're kind of looking at the screen. And for me, again, my eyesight, I kind of squint my eyes a little bit. It can be really rough. So make sure you take a good break. Something that we didn't have and I didn't hear uh, was brought up was any of the architecture. In our group, we I think it was our group, um, there was some signage, um, talk about the signage, like for prohibiting Cracker Barrel. But I was thinking of like whether it's sporadic or a particular area to have some architecture that's kind of like warm, charming, like not all modern and kind of like in Key West, you know you're in Key West, you know what I mean, from the architecture. Something like that. I, I don't know where. <laughs> I just thought that would be nice. Thank you. You're welcome. Josh, you're talking too much. <laughs> All right, we've got we've, a minute. We've had some fun interactive actions, Sherry. Thank you so much for coming. You're very welcome. Annie says hi. <laughs> Looks like we've got some stuff uh, going on in our chat box. So you are all welcome to download that full chat anytime you want. It might not make as much sense to you because you weren't in the breakout rooms, but you're welcome to do that. And of course, this chat box becomes part of the permanent record. So um, well, I said it to you. did I do it wrong? Oh, I don't know. We've been dumping um, literally thousands of words into the chat box in the last couple of minutes. So if you put it in and hit enter, then it is in there. But you can actually scroll back to see if it's in there too, Sherry. So when you get in the chat box, you can scroll back up to see. Okay. Oh, I see someone commented. Okay. No, oh, there you go. Perfect. Okay. Give it another few seconds. I'm going to mute everybody because I'm hearing some background noise. You can still unmute yourself at any time you want to or need to. All right, here we go. We're back on. Um, so we just went through this first round of questions. Um, I hope it was fun for you. Certainly fun for me. I know fun for my group. We have fun with this. And it's always so um, just inspiring to hear your vision of what the future will look like in Coconut Creek. 
the amazing thing about it to me is that you can actually make that happen. Um, you can work over the course of the next several years to put things into place so that you can actually see that in 10 years when we all get together. We can go hang out at some of these places you're talking about. What I want to do next is ask Elise to take over and um, I want her to share her screen. I know what she's been busy working on is that issue of preserve that we just answered for her. So Elise, you may have to automatically unmute yourself since I muted everybody. And Elise, would you take it away and share what you've been working on with us? Yes. So I captured the preserve um, feedback. These are the things that we want to preserve. Safety being number one, followed pretty closely um, small town feel and green spaces. Um, we're about neck and neck and then want to make sure it's clean and welcoming and friendly and there are community events. Um, police and fire are both really important and um, that family friendly feel. So that's why I drew in a family and some green spaces. So that's what I've heard so far that I've been able to capture. That's awesome. Thank you. I want to let everybody on know that at the very end, we're going to spend some time with Elise. I don't know what kind of time Elise is going to give us, but maybe five, 10 minutes where she'll show you what I'll call the initial sketch. Um, it's so hard to capture everything from a group this size that she's going to go off after tonight and continue to work on it, go back and we're going to sift through the notes to make sure we've captured it. And keeping in mind that we're looking at these big picture themes. Uh, you may see some specific things in there. If you don't see yours specifically, then look for the theme and make sure that we captured the theme. So it might be a week or two before we get sort of a final drafty draft out to you. But in the meantime, um, you will be able to at least look at the work she's done tonight. So at the very end of the meeting tonight, we're going to cover everything. We have time. Ah, Nora's moving to the phone. The only thing I will say is that those of you that are moving to the phone, you will not be able to join a breakout room, but that's okay. We'll try to keep you entertained. Um, so if you're still in the main room, then you will be sort of checked in on from time to time. And if you are in the main room, then I'm going to give you your own question to answer in your own chat room, okay? So if you get stuck in the main room for whatever reason, because you're a commissioner or you're on the phone, you will have something to do. So here's the story. These breakout rooms are going to be by your choice. What will happen is when Erin opens the breakout rooms, she's not going to do it quite yet. Um, I'm going to have her do it in a second. We'll walk you through it again. When she opens the breakout rooms, you will see all five breakout rooms and they will have titles on them by question. The question would be like, what does it feel like, right? Feel or look, or, you know, what's fun, or Zach's, the shopping, the retail, you will pick one yourself entirely on your own, and it will swoop you away to that breakout room. At any time, you'll see the little breakout room four square on your screen. You can switch from one breakout room to another without ever having to come back to the main room. You can also come back to the main room, entirely your call. So this is gonna be a lot quicker, right? So make sure that you decide which of these breakout rooms that you want. Aaron, would you show me the breakout rooms by opening them up, please? Those of you that are staff to these breakout rooms, please go ahead. Let me see. Ah, so as you scroll to the bottom, those are where the breakout rooms are. So if you are staff, please go ahead and join your own breakout room right now. People will follow you over there. Those of you that are looking at that, so there's the, um, Hi. 
you're back. Hello. I was on mute. Sorry. That's okay. So I sort of heard uh, what she said, but I presume are more people joining us? Yeah, we'll wait just a few seconds here and see if we have um, anyone else join us. We might be the unpopular breakout group. Who knows? Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's just give it a couple more seconds here. And I'm Terrell, by the way, Terrell Piper. Nice to meet Hi, you, Terrell. I'm Aaron. I'm the city attorney. I was in uh, breakout room four earlier and I warned um, Cheryl at that time that I have a seven year old son who's wandering in the background and may pop in. So just oh, that's okay. If, if, if I suddenly have to go off screen, that's why. That's okay. I've got a, a couple running around myself. So, oh, okay. All right, well, why don't we just start with introductions um, since there's only a few of us feel free to go ahead and unmute. Um, I see we have uh, Lee and Mike and then Peta. Peta Gay. What is it? Peta Gay. Peta Gay, okay, thank you. And then Maureen just joined us, perfect. All right. So Tara, why don't you start and just introduce yourself to the group? And um, also, could you say, if you do live in Coconut Creek, how long you have lived there? Hi, my name is Terrell Pyburn. I am the city attorney and I have worked for the city for almost seven years. I do not live in Coconut Creek. However, my stepfather grew up in Coconut Creek and I have family that has lived there for 50 years. Great, great. Um, Miss City Clerk. <laughs> Hello again. Hello. Um, again. Leslie May, City Clerk. I am not a resident of Coconut Creek, but I've worked for the city for seven years. Um, I've lived in this part of Broward County for like 26 years now. Um, I live in Coral Springs, right over the border from, um, from Coconut Creek. It's actually off a of Creekside Drive, <laughs> meaning our neighborhood um, slides up to Coconut Creek. So I can, I can see Coconut Creek from my neighborhood. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, Lee and Mike, would you like to unmute and just introduce yourselves? And if you live in Coconut Creek, um, let us know how long you've lived there. We do live in Coconut Creek. We've lived permanently here for two and a half years, but we've owned property here for 16 years. And um, we're residents of Winmore background in advertising and helping seniors with their Medicare plans and drug plans. Fantastic. Thanks for joining us. Maureen, go ahead and introduce yourself, please. Um, you're still muted. Just hit your unmute button. Okay. There you um, go. My line, I live in Cocoa Lake. I've been here for 24 years. I'm retired from Deerfield Beach High School. And um, I think Coconut Creek is probably one of the best kept secrets in Broward County. Great. Nora? Uh, Nora Rupert, I've lived here for more than 20 years and I am on the school board. So thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. Fantastic. Becky? Uh, I'm Becky Tooley. I have lived here 38 years. Our house was the 50th built in Coconut Creek, my husband at that time. Wow. I've been on planning and zoning and I've been on environmental and then I've been a commissioner for 20 years. Wow, that's amazing. And then Peter Gay, could you introduce yourself? Sure, good evening everyone. My name is Peter Gay Lake. I actually work with the city of Coconut Creek um, for almost 12 years. I do not live in the city of Coconut Creek, but I do love the city. It's a great city. Um, actually, when I was buying my, my, my house, I, I had to go further north to be able to afford it. I couldn't, you know, buy in Coconut Creek at the time, but I, it's a wonderful city. Fantastic. Well, thank you all for choosing my breakout room. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to um, tell you the question again and go into a little bit more detail. And then I will also type it into the chat box so that you can see the question. Feel free to take a couple minutes and think about it. Um, ideally, if you would like to put your response into the chat box, that would be fantastic. And then we'll see how we do on time. This is a shorter session. Um, and then we can also you know, discuss since we have a relatively small group. 
Um, so the question is vision 2030, what does Coconut Creek look like? And what is in Coconut Creek in 2030 that is not there right now? The second part of the question is how does it feel to be there? And we kind of expounded on this in the last breakout session. Um, not only how does it feel to you as a resident or someone who lives near Coconut Creek, but how do you want it to feel for new people coming into the city, uh, visitors, tourists, uh, potential residents that want to move into the area? How do you want them to feel on that first impression? So feel free to think about it, type it into the chat box, please. And, and um, like I said, we can discuss this uh, in, in just a couple minutes here. You gonna tell me what you're doing? You want it to look like solar, and this is what it wants to yes, look like. Yes, I'm out of, I'm out in. Okay, wait a minute. Let's move, move. Let me move the. Let's see. Modern city with okay. solar. Sorry, Terrell, I just did that just to you. I didn't mean to do that. There's for everybody. So whenever you're ready, feel free to enter. There you go. Lots of green space. Okay. God, I can see. Lots of green space. Modern buildings powered by solar hubs, a religious hub, a shopping hub, an educational hub, etc. Easily reached by public transit. Okay, so we just have about just a couple minutes left here. Um, can we expound a little bit on how you want others to feel as they come to Coconut Creek? So visit visitors, new residents, tourists stopping through, how do you want them to feel? Is that gonna be any different than how you wanna feel in Coconut Creek? Feel free to uh, put that in the chat box. What was the question again? Oh, shoot. 
Yes. So how do you want guests, tourists, new possible new residents? How do you want them to feel when they come into Coconut Creek for the very first time, that first impression? Anybody else have any other thoughts on that one? Okay, fantastic. All right, well, we are going to go ahead and go back to the main group. If you have any last thoughts, feel free to put them into the chat box. Um, I will be copying this whole chat and then uh, that will be recorded as well. Does anyone have any final comments? All right, I'm gonna send you guys back to the main room. Thank you so much. Hey, it looks like everybody's coming back. This is awesome. So that was really like speed dating. And um, I think I warned you a little bit that we wouldn't have a whole lot of time tonight, but what I'm starting to and I think what you're starting to hear probably as we report out, which we're going to do again in a minute, is some, some significant um, similar themes. And these themes might cross these questions, right? You might want to feel or see something that's related to safety or transportation, or that might be fun, or that might relate to a job. And that's one of the reasons why we ask all these different questions in a different way, to try to get as much cross information as we can. We're gonna take what you did tonight, and of course, Elise will show us her sketch in a few minutes, but we're gonna take what you did tonight. We're gonna to combine that with all of the answers from the community survey. Um, we, we have hundreds and hundreds, and we have literally thousands and thousands of answers in the community survey to sift through. Um, and the answers from those of you that I was able to talk with a little more personally, and we are going to create those common themes and areas, and we're going to call them key areas of focus and priorities and strategic goals. And once we get to that level, we're going to ask the staff, how are you going to try to accomplish this strategic goal? Sometimes they're already working on it, right? So they've got some stuff going on, some ideas in mind that we'll capture. And sometimes it's a brand new idea that might take 10 years to accomplish, but that's the very question, right? We have this vision we're creating tonight and all of this information is gonna go into these priorities and key areas and strategic goals. And then you'll see not only the vision, but the whole strategic plan. Um, I'm gonna put a link to the answers to the survey. It's what I call a live link, meaning it, it is up to date. The survey is closed as of now, so there, you can't add to the survey, but you can use this live link to go online and take a look at the current survey in all of its glory. So I'm gonna add that to the chat room in a minute. First, I wanna report out, and then I wanna ask my team to report out as well. So my report out, I got to my, my meeting late. They pretty much figured it out without me. So um, they did an awesome job, but similar answers to what we saw before. Um, a lot of this idea about these innovative technologies that are coming out in transportation, uh, not just electric, not just solar, but self-driving and what we need to do about that. 
and a lot of uh, conversation around um, what I'll call pedestrian bike. We, we call it in my world multimodal, which means that you've got a six to eight foot wide pathway that different types of transportation can use with safety. Um, and a lot around public transportation as well. In parks and open space, again, very similar. Um, uh, places for people to gather that maybe have shade, or if it were gonna rain, you could hang out underneath some type of a shelter, but they're more open in nature. They're not like programmed with hardcore activities, but they're more open space where you can gather and hang out. Um, and a lot around music, music in an amphitheater. And then again, in safety, not so much because I think because your community is super safe, but bike lanes, um, protection from traffic and those sorts of things. So uh, alphabetically, Bernadette, would you Bernadette, could you report out on your room? Yes, I can. Hi. Um, so it was interesting. Um, we had a little bit of a different conversation. The first time around, we talked about a lot of activities for kids. And this time we talked about activities for adults um, and programs for adults, whether they're recreation activities, volleyball, soccer, um, things to do in the city, music, um, more stores in the promenade. Again, activities like trivia and farmers markets and organics foods and arts and craft shows and fairs. Water theme park came up again, as did a dog park in the northern part of the city. And we kind of tied it up with maintaining community engagement so that people know about the activities and they and they can show up for the activities. So that's something the city's going to look at. Thank you. And just in case, Zach, I lose connection, can you keep this moving on? So, Zach, you go next. And in case you lose me, ask the next person. Yeah, you bet. Um, so yeah, for room three or uh, dining and shopping, we had a little bit of a different um, theme as well. We had a lot of uh, uh, drive and desire, wanting to see environmentally friendly shops, small mom and pop shops. Uh, we had specifically a plastic free shop, which was a request for now. Um, experiential retail, something to involve and engage the customers. And then obviously some development of the uh, you know, vacant 30 acres and the mixed use utilizing green space. And then the green space actually translated over to our restaurants too. Um, outdoor eating was a big theme, outdoor eating that was not next to a parking lot or a drive aisle. Um, mixed use with outdoor dining and shopping, um, really a lot, of, a lot of sense of place we were looking at here. Uh, fast casual being big, um, more eclectic, uh, higher end and affordable um, you know, options and uh, definitely more at the south end, but obviously more diverse um, and, and more opportunity, more variety throughout the entire city of Coconut Creek as well with regards with regard to restaurants. Um, farm to table and obviously international food court and diversity was key as well. So uh, Cheryl, I'll turn it back over to you, but I'll keep my mic hot uh, in case I need to send it to the next person. Thank you. My system gets a little wobbly some nights. So yes, let's go to uh, Anthony and then Aaron. Anthony, can you report out? Yes, I can after I unmute myself. Uh, <laughs> um, my group went over what kind of jobs, uh, again, that we'd like to see by 2030. This was a, um, a different response than the small business aspect that I heard from my first group. This group uh, really had a central focus on um, technology and being proactive and creating possibly an industry that uh, that nobody thinks about. Um, there was a, a focus on technological expansion um, and being prepared for the um, influx of people moving in, uh, as well as a focus on marine biology and um, focusing a little bit more on colleges and what's coming up on the next level um so yeah and, and to add to that also um factory jobs kind of going hand in hand with creating an industry that nobody really thinks about uh, there we just want to create more jobs or the citizen wants to create more job and um be prepared for those that are coming in thank you so, yeah Aaron. Can you close us out with a report? And then I want to check in with Elise. 
Absolutely. So again, my question was, what does Coconut Creek look like and feel like in 2030? Um, and some of the comments we had were friendly with a social downtown area, A-rated schools and keeping children engaged and excited in the school system. Um, safe, again, has been a very common theme, welcoming and inclusive. Um, and then sustainability again with open spaces, solar energy, green initiatives, a good balance of commercial and residential. Overall, a place that you can live, work and play all encompassing. A modern and progressive city and a city that has a variety of entertainment, restaurants, shopping and a place that people trust and are comfortable spending their money. Okay, I, I think Cheryl dropped off. Cheryl, okay. are you there? Um, okay, so thank you, Erin. I appreciate that. Um, Anise, can we check in with you and share the screen what the progress you have so far while Cheryl tries to sign back on? Sure. Let me share here. I've done a more drawing than writing so far. So we have in this area, drew in some of the ideas around having thriving businesses with diverse dining options and local shops. Um, heard a lot of things about that, sidewalk eating, um, making sure that small businesses can thrive, um, multimodal options, public transportation to in and throughout the city also to the airport and then to this section that I started with green spaces, public transportation to those as well. And um, so what I started drawing in there was parks and families and this amphitheater idea um, as a community gathering place. I will get a water park in there. <laughs> Is that sounded important? Um, and then just showing um, other outdoor activities in there. And what I heard towards the end was um, something about schools. So we'll make sure we get that in as well. Um, Definitely so. a lot of uh, a lot of variety and a lot of information coming your way, at least. So <laughs> we, we appreciate your efforts there. Cheryl, are you back? I am. It likes okay. me again. Elise, I was hoping you could share your screen and show us. Am I not showing it now? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought it was showing that the whole time. I'm like, oh my gosh, it doesn't love me. It's not showing me what you've got up. You guys were so, so polite as I was, I thought I was showing you this. Um, so so what, we're seeing, what we're seeing is your multiple screens. We're not seeing your drawing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hold please. Well, you know, Zoom technical difficulties. While Elise is getting that ready, I just want to point out that I dumped the link into your chat to the survey. It was also sent out. If you registered for our meeting, it was also sent out to you. So, um, and one more time before Elise gets going again, um, if you did not already enter your name into the chat room and you joined us partway through, please go ahead and enter your name into that chat room. So we've got a record you're here. So Elise, start all over again for me, will you? <laughs> well, now are you seeing my screen with my yes. drawing? Yes, yes oh. we are. Okay, yay. So um, I've got more drawing in here than writing, but I, what I started to draw in here was this idea of thriving businesses with diverse dining options, lots of local shops, um, local businesses, um, this multimodal idea with public transportation, to the airport, to recreation areas. Um, started to draw in this green space here with this um, amphitheater idea. Um, kids playing in, in open spaces. Um, you can see I think the small town in the background. Um, heard some things about water park that we might wanna add back there as an idea, but that sort of shows just the idea of public green spaces. Um, so that's what 
I've got started here and then heard a lot towards the end there that I'll be able to work in as well. So let's leave this up on the screen for just a second. Um, the other thing that everybody should know, per normal, um, we are all, as the hosts of those breakout rooms, going to dump back in this additional information you shared from the last breakout session. So we'll have that. And um, I want to see, um, and I'm going to sort of scan this really quick. If anybody has anything specifically that um, you would like to make sure you mention about Elisa's drawing um, based on what she said and knowing we'll probably capture it, but you just want to make sure I would like you to have a minute or so to put that into the chat box so that if you didn't see your major theme up here or didn't hear her read it out loud, um, make sure you put something like that into the chat box. And the other opportunity about the chat box now is, of course, now that we've kind of gone full circle a few times, something may have sparked in your memory, but you didn't get a chance to go to the fun group or to the shopping group or to the eating group or to the transportation group or to the feel and look group. So I want to offer you a moment or two to do that. I'm seeing some things come in, which is great. We'll get them captured in the chat box. So again, the question, uh, if you didn't get a chance to answer any of these, here's your opportunity. And I would encourage you to answer it as if you're answering the full question. So what does Coconut Creek look like? Your answer would be Coconut Creek looks like, what do you see? I see, what does Coconut Creek feel like? Coconut Creek feels like, what kinds of shopping do you see? Uh, what kind of eating do you see? What are the fun things to do indoors or outdoors? Um, I want to make sure that you who've taken your time out tonight to spend with us for the last few hours have an opportunity to say some of those things. So I'm going to have Elise leave her drawing up for another minute or so while you guys have a chance to do that. And even when she takes her drawing down, you can continue to enter the chat box, but I just want to close us out. And then um, I want to make sure if Josh is still here or our other commissioners that they can add anything they want to, and then we will be done for the night. So Elise, maybe another 30 seconds with your drawing left up. Those of you who are typing, keep typing. Don't stop typing just because Elise puts her drawing down. And just prepping my commissioners from Coconut Creek to let you know that I will do my best. I wanna call on you in, by person. And so there may be a little awkward gaps, but uh, I will call on each of the commissioners to see if there's anything that you wanna close out our night with. And then we will turn everybody loose. All right, Elise in 10. Thank you. If you are putting stuff into the chat box, don't get distracted. Feel free to continue to enter things into the chat box. And my calling on commissioners is going to be mainly random because I'm just going to go down my screen and look for them. Ah, the first person I ran into was Sandy. Sandy, would you care to say anything to close us out tonight? I think 2030 is going to look beautiful in Coconut Creek, even more than it does today. Thanks to everyone for your input. Give us Thank more. You. Thank you. And then I'm going to scan across my top and come to Josh is next on my screen. Vice Mayor, would you like to say anything to close us out? Just a thank you to everybody that decided to log on and share their input. Listen, I've heard some amazing action items for not just, you know, the next decade planning, but for right now planning. So uh, everyone who just devoted their time and gave us an evening. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mickey, you are next on my screen. Hello, everyone, and thank you for being here today. I really enjoyed 10 years ago doing 2020, and it really has become what we had imagined. So I'm hoping that this next 10 years will be the great forward looking that, that we're talking about here today. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. And I see the staff are entering a few comments in there. Um, I believe we had to have a couple of commissioners leave early, of course. I'm scanning. Um, somebody, oh, Becky, there you are. I see you, Becky. 
actually, I want to thank everybody for being involved uh, because I'd like to see what, um, hear what the residents uh, would talk about. The one thing that I really didn't hear much is, is a problem in every town and whatever, and that is the high school kids, things for them to do. Um, so hopefully they'll think about it when they come back to the next one and it can be discussed, but really thank each and every one. And I hope we can talk to uh, some more people that will jump on the next time. Yeah, it was a great session tonight. Um, I know I and my team, thank you. Before uh, we leave, I have a date to mention it to you again and some other ways for you to stay involved, right? At any time, reach out to any of the Coconut Creek staff with ideas. We have a couple of weeks where we're still gathering information. Reach out to me. Um, you've got my contact information from my emails. The next meeting to keep on your calendar is going to be that final community meeting. We mentioned the date already, but I want to make sure I mention it again, and that is Wednesday, April 28th at 530. So we're going to promote that one just like we promoted this one. It's going to be just as fun. So please do invite people, friends, family, neighbors, people you don't even know on the street randomly to put that on their calendars. And the next thing you'll see out from us is Elisa's drawing. It may be a week or even a little bit longer, but that will be the next thing you see. And you should know that you created that drawing. I mean, I know she did, right? She drew it, but you in this room tonight made that drawing happen. And for that, I wanna say thank you. Does anybody on staff have anything I missed that I need to cover before we all go home? All right. Thank you so much, everybody. If the staff would hang out with me for a minute, I need something from the staff, my staff, my group tonight, but everybody else can go home. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Well, good night, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Sandy or whomever or, or Karen, Yvonne does a lot of announcing on next door, like Becky will know.